this is really kuwait uh which is a play on words for cool and sweet i came up with it last year when i met my friend matt who i had been corresponding with via wrong planet and the other but i just checked in and i'm going to drop everything off and then head downstairs to work but there's a mini fridge in here so i'm really happy about that i'm going to have uh Aldi drop off some food later via Instacart, and I think I'm going to be good. I don't think I'm going to do Costco because that's just too much food. I think this is just going to be me and my food. Hello world, I'm Maya Ryan, and I'd like to welcome you to the latest episode of my blog series. Uh, so far, I've been able to share my own experiences on what it's like to live on the autistic spectrum. The second thing that I will do is give my two cents on autism in the media. The third area entails providing tips and advice for those of you who are on the spectrum, as well as your friends, family members, peers, mentors, educators, employers. And finally, I will cover topics of uh, things that I'm passionate about, in addition to doing day in the life type blogging. So please check me out. Welcome you to another edition of my blog series, Hello World with Maya. And what I would like to do today is share a life story with you. I don't need to repeat myself as to what I do on this channel because you guys just saw the introduction. What I'm going to do instead is share a story with you because it ties into my life. And I wanted to mention that I'm at Furry Weekend Atlanta. And yes, YouTube, I do like furries, but I'm not a super diehard fan. I don't go on to fur affinity. I don't uh, go to a lot of uh, events for furries, but I do come to this event at least once a year. I think I said advent, I mean event. But there's a reason why furries and pirates uh, tie into my life. So I'm gonna start from the beginning. In 2004, March 2004, it all started when I was learning a bit more about myself. 22-year-old me lived with my late Aunt Lois, and she had been talking to a fellow named Robert Morris. And I, at the time, did not know that he was on the spectrum. I didn't even know there was a spectrum. In fact, I didn't really know about autism at all. See, in my mind, autism was a disease and a disability, and that's what I was taught. So anyway, without further ado, what my aunt did was she forced the issue and she um, encouraged me to join this um, adult Asperger support group that was run through Georgia Institute of Technology, which is known as Georgia Tech, and also, uh, the Autism Society of Georgia. So needless to say, I joined this support group and I learned a lot that uh, this Robert Morris was also autistic and he had scored a degree in mechanical engineering and had a son who uh, got into aviation who was also on the spectrum. and. He just shared a really, really cool light, and he also uh, looked at autism in a very different light. Instead of looking at it in a broken light, he looked at it as a different way of thinking, which I'd never heard before. And in fact, that was the first time I'd ever heard of Temple Grandin. Meanwhile, at the same time, there was a guy there that I liked, and I'm not going to give away his name because number one, I haven't seen him in a long time, and number two, I want to do this uh, for the sake of confidentiality since I didn't get his permission. But I had a huge crush on this guy in 2004 and I thought he was going to be the one because he came and talked to me and I thought maybe he was interested and he gave me this forum uh, called pandora.zuffer.net and at the same time I started looking on there and I didn't know what it was. So I let it drop for a while. But then in 2006, I played Dungeons and Dragons with him 
and a girl who would be my ex-friend, uh, the one I've told you about. I could, talk to, I could talk about her another time, but she was another one of those toxic friends, but I will not dive into it today. Instead, I'm going to talk about this. So, the first time, 2006, I decided to try and get to know him, so I started going on these forums, and the director got a hold of me via uh, AOL Instant Messenger, and so I joined their, uh, their chat room, and he discovered that I was on there, and so he and I started talking. Well, at the same time, uh, I had fallen head over heels for the Pirates of the Caribbean uh, theme, and I had fallen in love with uh, Jack Sparrow. I liked him, and I saw him when I was on a cruise ship, not Johnny Depp himself, but I first saw the movie about a year after it came out. And then uh, 2006 was when they were making Pirates of the Caribbean 2, Dead Men's Chest was about to come out. So I was super excited because uh, I was one of those fans that just shipped Captain Jack Sparrow and Elizabeth Swan. Meanwhile, I learned a lot about furries. So it's really excited. I mean, it's really exciting. Later tonight, YouTube, what I'm going to do is probably walk around in um, my pirate made costume. So needless to say, I'm out of time. I'm going to go take a nap now in the room. If you like what I'm doing, hit that uh, thumbs up and that subscribe. Until next time, I'm Maya Ryan and I'm signing off. And it's a pirate's life for me. Help! Help! I'm in trouble! I'm in trouble!